Hi, welcome to Involve Innovation YouTube channel. In this video, we will see about what is latency, bandwidth, and what are the P50, P80, P95 percentile in the latency. And we will also see why do we use that instead of using average latency. First, throughput and latency are very important metrics in current distributed system which needs to be high performant. Increase in latency will negatively impact the user's experience and may eventually result in the loss of business. Nobody wants to spend time on a website that loads slowly. Let's see how an API call works. First, the client sends HTTP request to the server. The load balancer routes it to the server. From there, the server processes the input request. Based on the request, the server can get data from other API, which can be external or internal, or can fetch data from underlying data source. And then the server sends this response to the client. Here, the time is spent on every hop. Starting from the client request, here the client request travels through the network. It includes the network latency. From there, it reaches the load balancer, which routes the request to the underlying server node. There is time spent on this routing. The server node processes this request, which incurs processing time, and then it fetches the data from the underlying data store or API, so there may be latency introduced because of this data source resource calls. Finally, the time for the response to reach the client. The latency of the API is addition of all these process times. For example, if you add all this latency, then we will get 250 milliseconds. That is the latency of this API. The latency is usually measured in milliseconds. We will refer this latency as intrinsic latency. And the intrinsic latency of the API can be reduced by the usage of cache if your system is read heavy. I have a complete video on caching. I have provided the link of which in the description. If your system is read heavy system, latency can be reduced by using message queues for async processing. The intrinsic latency can also be reduced by optimizing the DB query usage of indices. Throughput is the rate at which the server handles the request. In other words, maximum throughput is the measure of what the number of requests a server can handle in a given period. In our example, let's take we have two threads per server instance and each thread can handle four requests per second. Because we saw each request can take 250 milliseconds, so a server which has two threads can handle eight requests per second. Let's see how the throughput affects latency. We have one server node which has two threads which can take a request and process it parallelly. Now if the server receives three requests at the same time, two threads pick a request each and one request is waiting in the server queue to be processed. Once the thread completes processing the request which it picked, then it processes this pending request. If you check the response time of each request, first and the second request processed in 250 milliseconds which is intrinsic latency. For the third request, it took 500 milliseconds because it waited in the server queue for 250 milliseconds. Then it got processed in 250 milliseconds. So the latency is spending time plus intrinsic latency. The average latency of three requests is 333 milliseconds. So if there is a sudden burst in incoming traffic, which can exceed the maximum throughput of the server, then the latency of the requests increases because the request will be waiting in the server queue. The throughput of the server can be increased by adding more server nodes. If you add one more server node that brings two threads, the throughput increases from 8 requests per second to 16 requests per second. The formula to calculate the throughput is divide the number of threads by intrinsic latency which is in milliseconds and then multiply this value with 1000 to get the value in seconds. Here, we have four threads and then the intrinsic latency is 250 milliseconds. Multiply this by 1000, we'll get 16. So the maximum throughput is 16 per second for these two server nodes. Let's see latency and throughput with the real-time application monitoring. Here, the first chart shows the number of requests per second. Second line graph shows the current throughput per second. Third chart shows pending messages per second. These are all the pending messages at the server side, waiting to be picked by the server nodes. Fourth chart at the bottom left is average latency per second. Fifth chart is the number of total threads 
currently processing the request. Initially, input request count is 30 which is above the throughput of the system, so some messages are in pending state. Which increase the latency when the input request count reduced, the pending messages also reduced and average latency got better because no messages are in pending state. The current throughput is the number of messages processed per second. It is based on the input request and the number of server nodes. If the input request is i, then the throughput will be at the maximum limit for the server. Here if you increase the number of thread, then it results in increased throughput. You can see the pending count drops and the latency reduces since there are no messages waiting to be processed. Here the average latency is not the correct metrics to understand the system performance. Because in heavy load systems, the average latency can be skewed by outliners or extreme values. For example, take this list of latency for a particular period. For this list, the average latency is 321. Here the average is not accurate representation of the list because except the last latency, every other latency is below 279 milliseconds. So we will use the percentage to measure the system performance. While average latency is single number, percentiles give insight to the distribution of the latency. To calculate the percentile, first we need to sort the list of latency in increasing order, then divide the percentile by 100. If the percentile to be calculated is 50, use the decimal representation as 0 0.50, multiplied by total number of latencies in the list. Here it is 20, 0 0.50 into 20 gives us the value 10. So the P50 value of this list is value in the index position 10. Here we are using one based array index. The most commonly used percentiles are P50, which is also the median. This represents the value below which 50% of data falls. Here in terms of latency, P50 indicates the latency value below which half of the request or transaction are completed. Here the P50 is 258, so 50% of IP calls have latency below 258 milliseconds. Next P80, this represents the value below which 80% of the data falls. In terms of latency, P80 indicates the latency below which 80% of the requests or transactions are completed. This is often used as a measure of the typical latency experienced by majority of the users. Here the P80 latency is 274 milliseconds, so 80% of the API calls have latency below 274 milliseconds. P95 percentile. This represents the value below which 95% of the data falls. In terms of latency, P95 indicates the latency value below which 95% of the requests or transactions are completed. It gives insights into the latency experienced by vast majority of users. Here the P95 latency is 279 milliseconds, so the 95% of the API calls have latency below 279 milliseconds. The same real-time application metrics, now we will add the P50, P80, P90 and P95 metrics. Here we can able to see, it provides the insight into the distribution of latency. For example, the average latency increases, but we can see 50% of user latency is still below 250 milliseconds. Thanks for watching this video. If you find this video interesting, I have a complete series on system design data structures and algorithm subscribe to this channel for more technical videos thanks for watching